Battle are up in Foothill. Pat, back to you. All right, Joe, all afternoon we have been hearing appeals for calm yeah. from communities in South Central and actually all over. People who are very bitter about the verdict. Um, he's being protected by a number of police officers and guards. Something is happening right now, and I think I'd like to get... I'd like to get out of this tape. In fact, Kim Mariner is joining me right now, and Kim was able to get over there. What's going on, Kim? Harvey, I can tell you that uh, a gentleman had just held up a sign that says, Simi Valley Shame, uh, and it uh, evoked a great deal of uh, response from the crowd here. Uh, a few minutes ago, a few officers were running on the other side of the courthouse, and uh, it appeared that they were running interference. Officer Powell hasn't left here, and I think the people here want to see Officer Powell before he leaves. But again, the, the crowd response is from a sign that just says simply, Simi Valley Shame. It really appears that people here are, are just ready to explode if the, if, if the reaction to Kuhn that you just saw is any indication. And uh, there were some people in the crowd who were pleading for calm, but those voices don't seem to be heard as much as those who just want to express bitter, bitter disappointment over the verdict and anger toward the officers. Again, as Kim just mentioned, Lawrence Powell, who really bore the brunt of the prosecution's case, Lawrence Powell has yet to leave this courthouse, and uh, his name has been mentioned a lot in the last 45 minutes. It appears to me that uh, these people are not going to leave until they have one last uh, attempt to express their dissatisfaction toward Powell. I'm going to put the microphone in the middle here because you're going to get an idea of how tense things really are. Get a cop in here to break it up. <laughs> we didn't want the old clown to be here. You guys brought it here. There's really simply a lot of screaming and yelling. There are people who are just angry, not in the sense that they're arguing points. Swiss cheese. Hi, uh, right, Barbara. Just to update you right now, the uh, tally right now as far as deaths is nine people have been killed throughout the uh, violence that erupted after the acquittals came through yesterday in Simi Valley. Most of the violence erupting in the south central Los Angeles area. There was a little bit of damage in Westwood. We were there around one o'clock this morning and there were several stores, four to six stores that were damaged, a Copeland sports store and the warehouse which if you've ever seen any of the damage done in the Westwood area whenever there have been movie premieres in that area. Um, the warehouse store always gets hit. Uh, not, no one was arrested and no, no one was injured. And uh, there was a little bit of activity going on in Beverly Hills. The, the police officers there, whenever a car drove in, and we watched this happen, whenever a car go, drove in that looked suspicious and had several times we saw, a car, uh, we saw cars with young um, black youths in it, police would converge on those cars in Beverly Hills, anywhere from five to six officers, turn those sirens on like wildcats chase these people out of town uh, they meant probable cause in most cases and uh, believe me you're not talking to Perry Mason here but there generally has to be a probable cause to be pulled over and to be asked for ID and and, and where you're going in this instance it would be my understanding and and help me on this Chris that with this directive now that uh, people anywhere in the city limits of Los Angeles can be challenged by police, can be uh, uh, told to produce identification and to uh, prove uh, what they're doing is lawful. If not, they will be subject to arrest. And that I guess the it. best advice is tonight, throughout the city of Los Angeles, if uh, you can avoid going out, stay indoors and uh, Stay with Eyewitness News. Looters and the burners, what you have to do is help the people on the periphery, help the people who are burned out, help the people who need their windows boarded up, help the people who have no place to go, and appeal to the other people's sense of, of, of dignity and humanity. Okay, isn't he a chopper? Your, your, your church has been, uh, if you will, a haven for uh, some of the people disturbed by it. These, these other people that were beginning to close in were really <laughs> beginning to bother me, and I, I was getting uncomfortable about the whole thing. And uh, I asked them uh, kind of in a nice way if what they could maybe do to help me out. And, and they did. They said, no problem, we'll run them out of here. And they essentially kind of lined up around this mall around us. And they chased these people out of there. There were some words passed, and, uh, but no, no fighting or anything. I don't know how they did it exactly. But the machetes were there, and, and they, they chased them out. And after that, they just kind of stood around and kept an eye on everything for us. And, and it was a good feeling. 
Captain, thank you. It's a good story, too, because I'm afraid what we have been hearing all along are negative stories about the reception that you, the, the firefighters have gotten in the neighborhood. I just thought we needed to ch a change of... This is, this is having a sweeping effect across America. Uh, we have reports that in Atlanta there were 100 protesters who marched on the state capitol hurling rocks at buildings and cars. Also in Madison, Wisconsin, there was also an incident there where vandals broke windshields of 34 police cars. And a uh, police spokes, uh, spokesperson there says the squad cars were parked in open areas along with other city vehicles and the police vehicles were targeted. So it continues here uh, in L.A. and it continues in other parts. Uh, Chicago, I understand, also had some demonstrations earlier uh, today. So this definitely uh, is not just here in Los Angeles. It's affecting uh, the entire United States, which is uh, only one of many reasons that President Bush uh, came out to speak just on this subject. It has began. It uh, began this afternoon in Riot Rapids, Los Angeles. Soldiers will be used for peacekeeping forces. James Lee, a spokesperson for Governor Pete Wilson, says the decision to deploy the troops who had been poised for duty since the governor declared a state of emergency about midnight was made at about 1.35, Chris. And uh, he went on to say that the governor had finished a phone call with the mayor and with the chief and with the sheriff and other local officials, and apparently all were in agreement uh, to bring the guard in at this time. So they are now being deployed in the riot areas of Los Angeles. The National Guard is on the streets of L.A. Uh, here, uh, right across the street from USA. I'm Frank Buckley reporting live back All right, home. Frank. All right, Frank. Frank. And we certainly do apologize for the use of that language on our air. Of course, situation's very tense out there, and uh, we. Uh, it's what happens Tell sometimes you what. when you do Tell live you TV. What. what we've seen for the last 14, 16 hours is a whole heck of a lot worse than a few words uh, coming across the air. If that's as bad as it gets, All right. we're it in is, pretty good shape. We are approaching 2 o'clock. We're going to get the latest from Jane Velas Mitchell at the Update Desk. Jane, what do you have? Well, here at the Update Desk in the newsroom at 2 o'clock, the very latest on the Los Angeles riots. We have a new death toll to give you. I'm just told uh, from uh, a writer here in the newsroom, uh, from the L.A. County Coroner's Office, we now have a total of 14 deaths. And you can add to that. 400 injuries and 378 arrests. Those are the very latest numbers just in of the death toll from the LA County Coroner's Office. Here's what authorities are doing to try to restore calm to the city of Los Angeles at this hour. The National Guard has been mobilized. We understand after some reported delays right now approximately 2,000 guardsmen are being deployed into the hard hit areas as we speak. And uh, we can also tell you that hundreds of California Highway Patrol officers and even their squad cars are being moved in aboard military helicopters. The sale of ammunition and uh, small quantities of gasoline has been restricted. A citywide dawn to dusk curfew has been opposed. That is once again a citywide curfew. RTD bus service has been halted in some areas as has some commuter bus service. Tonight's Clippers and Dodgers home games have been postponed as well as horse racing at Hollywood Park and we've been told most plays and theatrical productions at the Mark Taper Forum and the like have been canceled. Businesses have been shut down. Specifically we've heard from Wells Fargo uh, Bank branches and thrift. Is, this seems to be coming to a point where it's feeding on itself. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, Patty. I know exactly what you mean. And I think it's been expressed before. Uh, this has almost become a, 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 a festival atmosphere. Well, see what I got? Well, I'm going to go out and get the same. And let, let, let me slip into a personal note. I worked here in 77th Street, and I know that market very well. I worked here both as a patrol officer and as a sergeant. And I can tell you, that 98% of the people are not out there doing what we're seeing right now. Decent, hardworking, wonderful people. That's why it was worth coming down here. That's why it was worth risking your life for. It was a wonderful place to work. And those are the people that aren't out there. Unfortunately, there's that minority of people, that three, five, eight percent, whatever it is, that's out here just burning their neighborhoods to the ground. And I'm telling you, it's maddening. I suspect it's not even as high as 8%, Rod. Uh, certainly a few people uh, oh, vent, it, Chris, venting whatever it is they want to vent. I suspect in many cases it's certainly not any anger about the Rodney King verdict. I suspect that they, and some community leaders have said, they, they don't think the looters are particularly caring uh, one way or the other about the Rodney King verdict. They have an excuse to uh, get something for free. But what they are doing is costing the entire community literally millions of dollars uh, in hard dollars, but they're costing other people their jobs at that store right there, at the gas station that's on fire right there, uh, other stores that have been burned to the ground. So people's dreams and, and lives have been shattered by uh, some thugs 
and thieves and looters and uh, I, I'm sure there are there are psychological terms for it and I'm sure there are even police terms for for people who follow and get caught up in this frenzy is there any police line on on how to stop that how to how to break that uh, break that frenzy it, it all comes back to the same thing that we've been talking about all along and that's a massive response with sufficient personnel to be able to take back uh, a store like this and then hold it the Washington Plaza store that we were over and Leo Green was on the ground at I, uh, I, I think that all police officers would share that security guard or that store owner's frustration. The problem is there are so many locations, you would immediately, completely delete your entire field force to keep these locations secure. So until the, uh, these looters decide that they're going to stop doing what they're going to do, or that there's a, enough personnel that you can flood an area and keep that area secure, it's just going to continue to happen until they decide that they're going to stop. Rod, if you could stay orbiting over that area, we just saw two of the black and white uh, police cars pull out of that parking lot at the uh, ABC market uh, over which you're circling. It'll be interesting to see now what happens with the people that had run away when the uh, police cars showed up. Well, we have be uh, coming back in. We have five officers on the ground, uh, apparently in uh, two plane cars. Uh, Roger, if you can widen out, you'll see them now. It looks like they're dispersing. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the officers drive off. I noticed their four-door car. Chris, the other thing that I did notice is the uh, very visible presence of the Highway Patrol. Uh, uh, several, three, four, five, six units at some of these locations. So obviously, uh, they've been deployed. Also, Rod, word now from the uh, governor's office that the 2,000 or thereabouts National Guard troops from uh, around uh, the state that have been called at Daniel Freeman Memorial Hospital because of course his uh, hospital bills are going to be extremely high. Um, if you want to send money in, there is the address on there, Daniel Freeman Hospital at 333 North Prairie Avenue in Inglewood. And uh, make sure that you put on there on your envelope, Reginald Denny for the Reginald Denny Fund. Uh, a couple of other items. Uh while we have a moment here, uh, we mentioned earlier that, uh, that they were having problems, some problems at LA. Our National Guard will be in place. We, we hear that hundreds of uh, California Highway Patrol officers, CHP officers, and squad cars, in fact, were flown in today aboard military cargo planes from Northern California. Uh, reinforcements are expected to be joined later with National Guard troops. Again, this is sort of a quick rundown of what the uh, curfew will entail. As I said, dusk to dawn, everywhere the LAPD has jurisdiction. Now, if you have any questions at all, all you need to do is think about the last time you saw a cruiser in your area. Uh, was it LAPD or was it uh, uh, Pasadena Police or Beverly Hills Police or something like that? Uh, if you're in the San Fernando Valley, it is LAPD. And what they're trying to do is skip people off the corners to eliminate loitering, large groups, um, that sort of thing. That's dusk to dawn, goes into effect this evening. It will be enforced, as we heard from the, uh, the mayor's office. This issue has, uh, has reverberated nationwide, as we've been reporting the Rodney King verdict has sparked protests nationwide from north to San Jose and from east to Hartford, Connecticut. Most of them were peaceful, but there were some violent exceptions. In Atlanta, Georgia, about 100 protesters from several black colleges marched through the city's downtown area. Some of them hurled rocks at buildings and cars. A woman reportedly was kicked and beaten on the steps of a state office. State troopers were called to the Capitol, some dressed in riot gear. Earlier, the same crowd had held a peace rally at Clark Atlanta University before the downtown march. It is not known what caused, thing, caused things to turn violent in Atlanta today. Also, the uh, head of the NAACP joined other civil rights activists today, uh, continuing to voice their shock and their outrage over the, uh, the King verdict. Benjamin Hooks was especially incensed by a juror who said that Rodney King's actions dictated his fate. Look at that videotape. I don't care whether you looked at it fast, slowly, frame by frame, man being beaten by four officers with metal batons hit 56 times by count on his knees, back, stomach, how he could be in control. But two or three things grabbed me. Representative Waters said that one of the jurors said he was large, he grunted, he acted like a bull. This is that old hangover. 
that blacks are viewed as subhuman. So you use subhuman ways. You did Rodney King like you would a rabbit dog, a charging bull, not like a human being. And that is what we must work to eliminate. The whole Congressional Black Caucus also spoke out, including a prominent uh, Congresswoman. I accept the responsibility of asking people not to endanger their lives. I am not asking people not to be angry. I am angry and I have a right to that anger and the people out there have a right to that anger. We don't want anybody killed. None of us believe in violence. But there are some angry people in America and young black males in my district are feeling at this moment if they could not get a conviction with the Rodney King video available to the jurors that there can be no justice in America. We're back again on live picture from uh, Telecopter 4. Uh, they're on their way to another fire, we understand, at 39th and Normandy. Is this what we're seeing in the distance, Captain Dirk? Yeah, we are uh, west of the Coliseum here. I don't know the streets for sure yet, but there's several fires right in a row here. Uh, we haven't established what kind of structure it is yet. This smoke can be seen all over Los Angeles. In fact, uh, as far uh, west is the San Fernando Valley. You can actually smell the smoke emanating from downtown L.A. We should, as, as we listen to Maxine Waters and some of the others speak, we should, uh, we've been talking a good bit about the good people of South Central Los Angeles who are the ultimate victims, uh, certainly, of this rampage uh, that's been going for, on uh, last night and today. Uh, we should also talk a bit about the good people of Simi Valley. There has been great concern in Simi Valley that that community is being... Uh, uh, painted with a very broad brush because of what most uh, many people perceive as an unjust verdict. Uh, number one, uh, the people of uh, Simi Valley are anxious to point out that those jurors, only one of those jurors, in fact, lives within the city limits of Simi Valley. They would also like to point out that they, too, uh, were uh, surprised by the verdict and that they, too, share some of the concerns for uh, the appearance of injustice that this has left in the minds of, of many people. There are those good people in Simi Valley as well as in South Central Los Angeles. Back again on this. Now he's coming back this way across the street, but it's just to get people to disperse. He's gonna yell at them to get out of there. And he is pointing his rifle at them. People just walk away. I think it's fair to say by now that this is no longer a reaction to the verdict in the Rodney King trial. These are what you might call opportunistic scoundrels who are operating right now. I think it's worse than, uh, worse than that, Larry. It's a, uh, it is a violent hooligan element that uh, now, is in serious uh, violation of the law. Yes, I agree. Now we have some rocks and bottles starting to be thrown at the uh, highway patrol car. I've seen two of them tossed that way. And that is uh, one of the problems out here. There, of course, just way too many people too many people and there is no law enforcement. You can't deal with a crowd this size. Steve, would you agree uh, with the premise that the only way this situation is going to come under control is by bringing in preponderance force, including the National Guard? That's what two police officers told me earlier, Hal. Yes, they said it would take the National Guard in order for this to ever be stopped. Right. We've got uh, one, two, three more squad cars coming up here now. Highway patrol cars, each with two officers inside. I've got to grab the cable here and pull it up behind Bill. And you can see people all jumping out, out of the back window of the store, the back entrance to the store, as these people pull up. And Steve, at this point in time, there are no arrests being made, but they're simply trying to get the people out of the store and for the looting to end? Yes, they just want to chase them out of there, that's all. As this guy held up, uh, here's what I got, here's my loot. People wandering across the street with, I can see, speakers for stereos, man here with a microwave oven, any type of appliance they can find. Bill, let's get back out of the street here. Let's back up a little, Bill. Right, uh, Steve, we understand that 700 uh, California Highway Patrol officers have been dispatched from various points around the state. Uh, to the crisis area, so that will be some reinforcements, but still uh, far from uh, enough in order to uh, deal with the situation. I did notice on the unit right in front there, on the left of your screen, the one officer got out and loaded around into uh, the chamber of what appeared to be a shotgun. Yes. Uh, so they are prepared uh, to fire if they should be personally attacked, I would well, think. Well, here, look over here. You got a man who's got his hands up. Man has a, has a rifle aimed at him now and he's telling them to get out of the store. 
Yeah, there just get out of the store and he's going to get rid of him. Yeah. Probably 15 or 15 years old or so. Right. I'm still amazed at the amount of traffic uh, in the areas, and I am sure that all law enforcement officials will be advising everyone to stay home if they can and stay out of the areas where they've heard there is trouble. We get it with the mayor, Jan and Hal, uh, and the chief of police, Daryl Gates, having now decided on a dawn to dusk curfew over the entire city of Los Angeles, with Compton officials having decided to uh, put a curfew in effect there, possibly with Inglewood officials putting uh, into effect a dawn to dusk curfew. I think for a lot of the people who are out now, as Hal remarked earlier, in this somewhat fiesta, uh, festive nature, uh, this is going to come to a crashing halt because people are going to be in some serious of, danger. Uh, highway patrol car just had just, a brick thrown through it. There's going to be some serious danger on the streets for people who are out after the curfew hour. I think this is going to come to a crashing halt about that time. Well, I think it may gain, uh, may, may come to a halt, Larry, even, even sooner. I, I have a report that the National Guard has been deployed. The number that uh, number of troops will be 2,000, but 850 are already moving into position. And I think what you're going to see, just judging by um, this kind, it's going to be a military operation. Yes. And it's going to move in, I think, with overwhelming force. I think the strategy now, as we've been seeing it, is just to get these people out. They're not interested in, uh, in, in arresting, uh, except if there's real serious personal injury or violation. Uh, and I think then the National Guard will move in in a combined operation with the uh, LAPD, sheriffs, highway patrol, and uh, state police. And I think they'll try to gain control that way by sheer force of arms. You know how you and I were remarking in Jan last night mm -hmm. that uh, one of the differences, and we hate to keep making allusions to this, but one of the differences between now and 1965 is that the civil disorder is spread over such a, a wide area. This is a huge, huge city. And the area which uh, had to be cordoned off and patrolled in 65 was comparatively much smaller. That's right. It was compact, uh, as you'll recall, down on Central Avenue mostly. But this, uh, violence pops up in one area, then in the other. And let's remember, too, the difference between 1965 and 72. There are uh, vastly more people, Absolutely. just numbers of people Sheer in Los, in Los Angeles. Let's go back to Steve now uh, for a report. Now we're getting a uh, police presence here, Hal. In fact, uh, you can uh, look across the street see about uh, eight to ten LAPD officers standing up uh, in front of that store. I believe they're probably going to make a sweep of the store and first they have to uh, form up to decide which way they're going to do it. You have CHP around both the front and the back side of it so they've established a perimeter here. However people continue to run across the street carrying everything. Let's move just a little bit. Carrying everything from, uh, I saw one man carrying two rugs a minute ago to another man with a vacuum sweeper. Uh, this is how it has gone here, though, on Washington uh, Boulevard, where stores have been looted continually, all morning and afternoon long, and the looting continues. There's another uh, bottle being thrown at a CHP car as it pulls up. The looting has continued all morning and afternoon long, until the officers arrive in one area and then... Uh, been looting the store. We're not sure exactly what, but we've been watching him. He did go across the street from that strip mall and uh, uh, picked up that dolly and started running away. But you see, uh, police have been guarding for the last hour this Vaughn store, which was the target of the looters about an hour and a half ago. They broke the windows here, went in, looted the place till the police arrived and drove them out. Then they went south on Vermont towards Wilshire, and you look down there, the police presence is very high, and they were breaking windows at all the fast food restaurants, the Jack in the Box and other stores down to Wilshire and west on Wilshire. Uh, and then all of a sudden they're back up again and into the strip mall that uh, Bobby was showing, showing just a minute ago. It's interesting because the police here in the Vons parking lot sat and watched them for, I would say, 20 minutes and really didn't do anything. And I could see what appeared to be a merchant arguing with the police to do something. And the police officers here just stayed. They were on their radios, but they didn't do anything. All of a sudden, about a half dozen squad cars went up that direction, but they passed right by the strip mall on Vermont. Uh, didn't stop and the looters started to run then they turned around and went right back in not only they're looting they're picking up rocks and anything else bottles throwing them through the window the plate glass is being broken and uh, and so it's really been quite a scene here and as I said it's more like a carnival these people aren't angry over Rodney King and the verdict 
they're kind of getting into this. Uh, they're, they're just running back and forth, grabbing at whatever targets of opportunity. Emmanuel, come on over here a second. This is a gentleman that's been sitting here watching this, and, and you told me a minute ago this is no longer a black issue. What no, is it? No, it's not. It's uh, just stupidity of the people. And uh, I, I say the young kids, if they should have been in school, if they're not, they're all bringing all this together and just taking everything and, and burning and killing up everybody. I don't understand the shit myself. Excuse my expression uh, on your air. But uh, this is really stupid. But now you've been watching this. You saw these people run up there as soon as that store uh, looked like it was uh, became available. And we're watching people now run out of that store. Uh, what is the mentality here? Let's just grab something while we can, have some fun and get yeah, out of here. They know they can't, they can't be arrested. The officers are out there, but I feel if the National Guard was here, they don't have to justify their actions. So you think the National Guard, which I understand is now being deployed, should have been deployed before? Last night, I don't feel it should have been a uh, Derek Gates and uh, Mayor Bradley Hero thing. It should have been, the uh, National Guard should have brought in last night. I read about around, I say midnight last night, somewhere along there, when it really was rough at the time. Okay. Emmanuel, what's your last name? Emmanuel is my last name. Celia is my first name. Celia. Okay, thank you very much for talking to us. We appreciate it. Sir? It's all happening up there at Radio Show. Yeah, we've been watching that. Uh, they're breaking the windows, wiggling the bars, getting in. Yeah, we've been watching that. Now, you guys, you just came back from there? A better view. In fact, the, the neighbors have been helping him move all of his belongings out on the front lawn. Here we can get a better view. You see how close that fire is to his house. And the neighbors are worried that the roof is going to fall. They have been steadily bringing out all of his belongings. It's been like a joint effort. Everybody has been pitching in for the last 20 minutes, but I don't know. It looks like it might be uh, futile at this point because the fire is moving pretty quickly. And the firemen are kind of waving everybody away because they think that wall right there is going to go. But the man will not give up his garden hose. He is standing his ground right now. He wants to save his house, and who can blame him? Well, we can see the uh, water on your lens, which means that right now you're too close, and we'd like you to move back uh, as well, which I see yeah, you're doing. And we're it's starting to backpedal right now, Chris. It's bitten to dust. In fact, uh, Beth, can you turn around? Young man behind you carrying a white bag uh, full of stuff. Obviously, uh, his loot uh, from somewhere got too heavy. He's got so much, uh, so much stuff in there, he can't carry it all. That's, that's what you see just got hit by a really good spray of water. Uh, that's what you're seeing all over the city. David, uh, uh, isolated incidents uh, on occasion. It will get uh, uh, fast and furious. A group of people will actually run in. Also on the way over here, another uh, quick incident. A bunch of the cellular phones and torched a dumpster outside. Uh, firemen made quick work of that. The phones are gone. Uh, good luck uh, to the owner of that store. Uh, looting uh, the uh, the order of the day out here. Some uh, just absolute random violence is taking place now, and we can see it from the air if we we'll go to Captain Dirk uh, at a car dealership where some of the cars are not being uh, yeah, looted, but uh, set afire. Captain Dirk, this is that car dealership we were talking about? Yeah, there was a, there was a car dealership that uh, there was one car sitting in front of it on fire. We'll be coming back around to that in a minute. We're in the, the Crenshaw area here. And uh, this fire has been going pretty good, but the fire department is working on it and starting to make some progress. Were they able to get any vehicles out of that dealership, can you tell? Uh, the, it's just a single car in front of the dealership here that's burning. The dealer. A few minutes, Warren. Be careful there, Warren. Yes. Too. Hal, what we're looking at here is the Compton Center Mall. And we showed you this fire earlier. It has clearly escalated some bigger flames than what we showed you earlier. And firefighters here attempting to put water on it, but it's taking them a long time to, to get it under control. A big, huge column of black smoke rising into the sky mm. and the flames kind of boiling out of there. That's a Newberry's department store, or at least it was. Again, you're going to see right now a paramedic coming in. The whole window is smashed out. I don't know if you were able to take a look at that as they're going in. Uh, we have heard of, of paramedics being attacked with pickaxes. Uh, we have heard about machetes being brandished as firefighters were out trying to fight fires on the scene. Um, a really dangerous situation. They themselves are feeling very much 
like a department at siege. Um, again, you're hearing the sirens as they're rolling in and out of here. Uh, we have another reported injury to a second firefighter. Apparently, he was not hurt by any people in the area. He was hurt by a fire hose that whipped up in his face. That is only the second injury to a firefighter that we've heard today. Right now, the biggest problem is trying to relieve some of these people that are out there on the scene. They are so tired. Uh, anyone who's working right now is probably going to be working until... See, there's a hydrant. It's kind of hiding behind a telephone pole, but yeah. they, they are that, getting plenty of water. I asked that for a reason only. That, that would obviously means that they're not going to run out of water uh, you know, anytime soon, uh, ex having exhausted their oh, onboard on supply. They wouldn't want to with, with, this, uh, with this particular structure because it's, it's been a tricky one. They've had some problems. It's good that they have a, a, a good supply of water they need it those firefighters have not uh, backed down either they have been at it I mean and a lot of these guys have been here last night when we were out and they had just one fire after another that they had to go after and a lot of them just uh, it's just turnaround time so they're they're still at it and I don't see where they get the strength because uh, I'm sure they're very tired Jody uh, let's uh, let's uh, go all right uh, I, yeah, uh, please uh, keep us informed about uh, that uh, poor man's house, and if they can save it, you know, please let us know about we that. We will. I just wanted to, uh, to say one thing here, that violence uh, has been reported in Atlanta, Georgia. Reporters say that they were attacked while covering marches near the state capitol and the city hall. Windows have apparently been smashed, and some passersby beaten at a subway station. That this morning. This uh, is apparently a fresh fire uh, that we're seeing now. Is that correct, Mark Dunn, in our chopper two? Uh, Chris, it has been burning for a while. We saw the smoke from quite a distance. Right, we've yeah. seen several of those blow overnight. Uh, they explode as soon as they get hot or the fire gets close enough, and that would seem to be very dangerous uh, for these firefighters on the other building. Again, police presence in the area, but uh, their job here is, seems to be to just keep traffic out of the area. Trying to protect those hoses that are stretched across the streets, uh, providing the water to fight these fires. Riot zone to give you some geographic uh, perspective. Now, this uh, also was originally uh, roughly the area of the uh, first curfew that was uh, discussed earlier, which has now been expanded. But this is uh, the riot zone at the present time. As you can see, uh, it goes as far west as Crenshaw uh, Boulevard, as far east as the uh, 710 freeway, and then on the south, Lomita, and on the north, uh, Jefferson Boulevard, uh, and uh, just below uh, the city hall. Now that is an enormous area. If uh, I would have to make an estimate, and uh, Larry and Jen, maybe you can get in uh, on this with me here, I would say that the distance from City Hall down to Lomita is what, probably 10 miles? 10 miles at least, Okay, yes. then 10 miles, I would estimate by say five or six miles. Uh, we're, well, probably more than that, maybe seven that miles. Say, desperately to save this house, look at this. Take a look at the house, no flames. It looks like they've been able to save the house. The liquor store is still on fire, but the house seems to have been spared. Now, we showed you uh, those pictures earlier of a man on top of that house trying to save it. Here's the man. His name is uh, Sidney Moorfield. Sidney, why did you do that? You don't even live here, do you? Try to help them people save their house. But you were putting your life in danger. Why did you get up on that roof like that? I don't know. It's like living on the edge. What about the, the man who lives here? Do you know him? Do we... No, I don't know him at all. I see him around at the store sometimes. And you just wanted to save the house for... Yes. Why? why? I guess people just have a, don't understand why they put their lives on the line for someone they don't really know well. I don't know. They might not, the house would have burned down. They might have no other place to go to. So I don't need for them to get in no type of trouble or nothing like that. Thank you very much, Sidney Moorfield. Uh, he was the man that was on top of that house uh, risking his own life. Apparently, he doesn't even know the resident there very well. Uh, but that's the situation here on Normandy. I'm Frank Buckley reporting live. All Frank, right. thank you. Small victory. There haven't been many today, but that's right. nice to Glad see. Glad to see that the house is yeah. intact. Right now, we want to run through some of the uh, reaction to the violence here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's certainly coming in fast and furious, calling for calm and reason. Our community, President Bush said, quote, the trial's outcome has left us all with a deep sense of personal frustration and anguish. And yet thereafter, he said, uh, he spoke to Attorney General William Barr, who said, quote, a federal probe of the King case will be pressed as expedient uh, as soon as possible. 
Uh, a number of black leaders around the country are demanding the Justice Department bring federal civil rights charges against the four police. there, though, so we will, uh, we will try and confirm that for you and bring that to you later. All right, Patty, we have uh, word being uh, spoken in my ear even as you were speaking about four busloads of California National Guard troops having uh, being bussed into the uh, police academy area in Elysian Park near Dodger Stadium. That's over and above the roughly 100 troops being taken to the Lakewood Sheriff's Station from uh, Los Alamitos, which is a major staging area for the 2,000 uh, troops that the uh, governor has called out and are in the process now of being deployed. Over and above Lakewood Sheriff's, we have four. All of the Southern California rapid transit buses and the train lines are going to stop operations tonight at sundown. They're going to stop all of their operations at sundown in consideration of passenger and employee safety uh, because, of course, of the violence throughout the city. And um, the shutdown at uh, sundown is going to be in effect, according to RTT general manager, until further notice. Tricia, look at this. We have. Uh <clears throat> Mark Denon, our chopper, has uh, come across yet another fire. Um, you know, where are you now, Mark? Uh, Chris, we're south of uh, the Century Freeway, I think uh, down on Crenshaw, all the way down. Uh, I think what we have here is a uh, branch of the U.S. Post Office on fire. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, um, it, it does appear that uh, way. Those appear to be postal vehicles parked in that parking lot around. Uh, <clears throat> well, now that is... Um, that is a doubly disastrous because uh, you can only speculate what uh, was there in the mails. Uh, well, this is the end of the month. A yep. lot of folks get checks at the end of the month from various uh, groups, and uh, we're probably looking for that. In fact, Terry Anzer, I think, alluded to that a bit earlier, that they were going to pass out Social Security checks at some mm. of these uh, branches, and they were supposed to be distributed today. Lord knows what that will mean for getting your Social Security worked out or checks, anything else that you might be getting. Checks, legal papers, uh, letters of all sorts, uh, communications. That is a big, big fire. <clears throat> and you mentioned uh, that. Uh, you mentioned the library, the, the L.A. public branch of uh, uh, the library in South Central. The uh, Nipero Nipero Sarah Sarah branch. branch mm -hmm. In South Central Los Angeles, their, uh, their public fire. library okay, well, has been burnt to the ground. And now we're burning down a uh, post office. A post office is, uh, is burning here. Uh, that is a... Um, a very, very bad fire now. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, fire response to this one as yet, uh, as with all the other fires that we've seen. Uh, they cannot be everywhere, and it takes time to get to these things. Uh, well, just look at that. The picture says it all. It's huge, a huge square building, and uh, it has already gone through the roof. We have a confirmed report now that four truckloads of National Guard troops have just arrived at Dodger Stadium. Uh, repeating information now that uh, apparently four busloads of National Guard troops have uh, have shown up at one of the other staging areas. One was at the Lakewood uh, station we talked about earlier. This one is uh, near. The Later, it can be assessed, and of course, it will be assessed by everybody. But what is needed is a very large show of force, and the LAPD is not all that large. But we now have all of these departments plus the National Guard. We have now the resources, the manpower to go into the street and secure them. And they have to be secured because people have to be able to go about their lives in a normal manner. More than anything else, that's what has to happen. I, I just saw something earlier on television this morning where there was a grandmother with her grandchild who's in a wheelchair. And she is trapped inside her house, trapped there because they are afraid to leave because of all the rioting in that neighborhood. That's the reality of what is happening in this community because of these thugs and these criminals and these arsonists that are going through the streets, making it impossible possible to live in a civilized community. We don't want to point fingers, you said that, but was there anything yesterday afternoon that you heard? Responsibilities in this case. That was President Bush talking this morning, uh, reading a statement. That federal uh, investigation he was talking about refers to an investigation by the Justice Department of possible violations of Rodney King's civil rights by the four police officers who were indicted in the case. And that investigation sort of got shelved when the grand jury handed down the indictment on state charges. Now the president is saying, and so is the attorney general, uh, that uh, with the acquittal yesterday in Simi Valley, that it is quite possible that the Justice Department's investigation of that possibility of federal charges against the four former defendants may be renewed. Will be renewed and, and continued. Uh, we have this word, all uh, Southern California RTD service will cease at 6 o'clock tonight. Four busloads of National Guard. Point in time, could you give us a count on how many fires that you can see from that location? It would be impossible to count. 
There's oh, so literally, many. There's so many. If I showed you, you wouldn't be able to see them all. If, if he pans up, you can't really see him. But there are, there are many, many, many fires. It, it's just impossible to count. Well, just to give you an idea, Eric, there was a report by one uh, fire officer, uh, just reconfirming uh, your your view, uh, who tried to drive the uh, Harbor Freeway early this morning, at about uh, I guess it was around 5:30, 5:45 a.m and said that it was impossible to, uh, to, to uh, get through there because of the acrid smoke, had to roll the windows up and recirculate the air through his car. It was the only way you could get through without about choking on the smoke. Mm. Know what to do, though. Now he's put the gun. He's got a gun out. He's got a gun. He's holding on a young black male. Now he's letting him go away. He's still holding his gun on a car. Here he is, a choice here of, of dozens of looters, and for some reason stopped one in particular. He's put his gun back in. There's a police officer trying to lift a TV set that is out of the cart and out of the back of this guy's pickup after he sticks his gun back in his belt. Quite a scene. Here we have looters escaping from this Fedco lot. We can hear them yelling at each other to get out of the way so they can get out of here. I mean, all ages, really. Teen to middle age. The cops making a guy help now here, take here, it here, Here's an interesting sight. Here's the officer who was pulling a gun on a looter the looter helping him lift the TV set out of the back of his pickup truck and telling him to get out of there. Unbelievable. Pan over to your right, we see a bunch of bunch of cops in the lot up here. Now, it looks like it, we got here yes. to witness this skirmish out of the parking lot, a yes. mass exodus. It must yeah, have it, been it, it, it because some officers arrived here at that point and everybody just fled. We've seen this. This has been a familiar scene for the last 12 hours. The police come, and the looters right ahead of them, beating their way out of there before they can get arrested. Now we're looking uh -oh. at this fed lot. I got action. Lot. I got action on a cop. Up We've got here. some action on, on our somebody. officer. He's going after somebody. We don't know what guy. it's about. A couple of officers and a guy backed off. Looked like two, three officers went after a guy and then backed off him. Had their nightsticks out. Put them back. Fire trucks. Fire trucks out in front of the Fedco. Really quite an unbelievable sight. The whole parking lot littered with debris. You know, I don't know that's, that's from, you can see trash cans overturned, uh, color TV boxes, Panasonic Zenith sitting there. I assume they're empty and the people took the televisions on and just left them. They we left the boxes the behind. We can go in the lot. There's a a lot literal of traffic there. jam all around this Fedco. Now that the looters have taken off, it looks like traffic has backed up around, uh, all around the shopping center. People who had just been passing by. We see officers in the parking lot. One has his shotgun out. Two have nightsticks out. Another four or five, no weapons out. It looked like there is one small blue compact car with the doors open. I don't know if you can see that. Can you paint over that? Yes. I don't know what's going on there. Several photographers taking pictures of it. A police officer standing near it. Cop was taking merchandise out of that car. Cop was taking merchandise out of that car a few moments ago, I'm told. The looters pretty much cleared out of this area. A max, mass exodus, I and mean, it was unbelievable people fighting to getting out of the parking lot with the police on their tails. Now look at this parking lot. You can sweep across here. Now you just see police officers everywhere. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 23, like 25, 30, at least 30 police officers out here in front of the lot, Fedco. A few stragglers in automobiles. We don't know if they were stop looters. TV crew. Okay, here we see right ahead, dead ahead, two suspects on the ground in cuffs, police officers standing over them. These are the only arrests we've seen down here. Okay, let's just. Oh. 
Okay, if my microphone's hot here. Okay, let me fill in here. This is me on the set again. We stopped the narration here for a while. We now are in the Fedco parking lot. As we said, these are the only people we saw arrested at this point. But things had calmed down at this point. But hang on to this tape for a while. All of a sudden, just like embers burning in the bottom of rubble at a charred out building, and they're fanned and the flames start to build again. This is what happens at this scene. It's calm, the parking lot is empty. I would say at least 100 cars of looters piled out of this lot you're looking at. Things seem to be calmed down. And then there's just a, a ground swell happens here again across the street. And at some point here, you will see it develop again. And what you will see is really quite unbelievable as looters attack another store here across the street. At one point here, I went to a telephone near this store and a nice black gentleman, about 30 years old, came up to me and just said, you know, get your white butt out of here because you're gonna, be, you're gonna die. And at that point, I ran back across the street into this area we were seeing right now and sort of hung around with the police officers. That wasn't a threat, it was a warning. It was a warning, yes. He was being very uh, gracious. These, again, are the only few people we saw arrested. There you see them in cuffs. I want to hang with this tape. I don't know how much longer they'll be without narration. But it, what comes up here is the worst that I've seen here in the last 16 hours. It's Chris just Blanchard, this is blatant. unbelievable. It's blatant. Uh, I, I, you had the perfect phrase for it, a traffic jam of looters. You yeah. said that before. Now, you don't know why these people uh, were arrested. No, I don't. I assume that they were looting. And now that the uh, material goods inside the Fedco store. Yes, now this, this, this part of the Fedco, this is the automotive center right here, which was just really burned out. I don't think anything was left in there. It was just like completely gutted. It looked like at one point the firemen just stopped fighting it. It was just, it just let it smoke. Uh, the Not at all. Well, I, I can't explain that. I, I Maybe they know the fire, that, that the cops are there to take care of the firefighters first, and, and uh, they figure they'll have time to take off I guess if that's the need be. You can see the, the building right directly across now that we were talking about where we had the smoke coming out of the vents uh, is fully involved now, and that's uh, burning right out onto uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. Man, this is terrible. Back down to the uh, looting cliff. Uh, you said uh, they were looting there. Normally they loot, then they set fire. Have you seen anything like that down uh, there I can, yet? I can just assume that's what's going on. And now, uh, you know, there's a big Sears store right here, uh, if you're familiar with that. And it looks like uh, I don't see anybody going in and out of the Sears store, so maybe they might be leaving it alone. Just one door down from that fire is a, is a furniture store. Uh, a couple of those were torched overnight. Okay, uh, Jess, if you ask me a question, you're breaking up just a bit. Try it again. That was Colleen, but um, there's an incredible feeling of impotence uh, when, you, uh, when you watch that looting go on unabated, when you watch arson being committed in broad daylight, when the police, the National Guard, the Sheriff's Department, the California Highway Patrol is unable to stop it. I'll tell you what, Jess, last night, well, actually, it was early this morning, I finally got in a sack, and um, <clears throat> I tried to go to sleep, but what I couldn't get out of my mind was that gentleman, that, they, uh, that truck driver, <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we know which one you're talking about, Cliff. The truck driver at the corner of Florence and Normandy. Uh, the guy who was in the uh, cement truck who uh, was pulled out of his cab earlier, uh, beaten, kicked about the head. And uh, actually, we have some very good news about him. We understand he was in surgery for about five hours overnight. But his doctors say uh, he's going to be OK, he is in critical condition. Our Joe Rico has been checking on some of the people that we saw in videotape yesterday, some of the people who were dragged out of their cars and hurt. And he's up in the newsroom now with the latest on their condition. Joe? Colleen, a seven, rather 17 confirmed dead tonight, this by the coroner's office, among them at least one good Samaritan who stopped to help a driver who had been pulled from his car and beaten. So far, 450 uh, people injured. That's a conservative estimate. And for the hospital scrambling to treat them, no let up in sight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where were you? What were we doing? No, nothing. Doing nothing. What happened? So right down the going home. They were throwing glass. They were throwing bricks. Everything else, man. It has been non-stop at Daniel oh, Freeman Hospital in Inglewood. Since last night, more than 70 people, most of them victims of the horror and brutality along the mean and angry streets of Los Angeles, have rushed or have been rushed to the emergency room. 
Two have died here, a male Hispanic, gunshot wounds to the chest, a male black who was thrown from the bed of a truck hitting his head on the pavement, and among the injured treated here, 32-year-old Reginald Denny, the truck driver who was pulled from his semi-rig and viciously beaten by a mob, the horror witnessed by thousands of television viewers. We were inundated. Patients were arriving by pickup truck, by car. As you know, I think the, um, the driver of the big rig, the semi, was brought in by a good Samaritan who drove that truck in with the guy in the truck, mm -hmm. unconscious, unresponsive. Um, I've worked here for 10 years. I've worked at county facilities. I trained at a county facility, and I've never seen anything like it. Do you have an idea as far as the sheer numbers and things like that and how many of we have 15 beds in the emergency department, and at any one time we had between 20 and 30 patients in chairs, standing up, in cubicles, in the hallway, on a gurney, mm -hmm. chaos. He was uh, burned when uh, he was by a building that uh, exploded that was on flames last night. And amid the scramble to treat the injured, at least one area hospital, Santanella Hospital Medical Center in Inglewood, has been criticized for allegedly turning away patients, presumably those who could not pay for hospitalization. Officials at Santanella deny that, saying there was a miscommunication and they are now taking in anyone who needs help. At that moment, Santa Monica and Western? Yes, that's yeah. correct, Tricia. Uh, it seems to have dispersed the crowd somewhat. I would imagine uh, what the police would like to do is gain control of their own area and then maybe sweep the street to clean out the area. You can see the looting has stopped somewhat, but the crowd has just gathered further down the street. We uh, were hearing unconfirmed reports that there might be some looting at the large Sears store in that area, which is really the hub for this whole community over there. Uh, when we come around again to the front of that store, we'll look. There doesn't seem to be any entrance being made from the rear. A uh, number of different areas across Los Angeles. This one just six blocks from where we are mm -hmm. right now. We don't know what is burning there. We just know it is a, a quite heavy fire at this point. And we uh, also have Michael Connor in South Central Los Angeles with some new developments there. Mike? But you know the fire department is overworked, under, uh, under attack even sometimes, and is just not able to respond to all the fires that are happening, sometimes because of gunshots or other threats, and sometimes because they just can't get to them. We're going to show you what happened when the fire department could not respond to a fire that started in a mini mall and jumped to people's homes. This is happening at Sloss near Broadway in the last hour. Now, it, you may not be able to see it from, from here, but that, there's a people's homes. People had been living in there. We're going to swing around in a moment and show you the other side. But this tape tells the story. Now remember, the fire department had not responded. Could not get in, didn't have the manpower, for whatever reason, did not respond. So the people are trying to put the fire out themselves with almost nothing. I mean, the, the efforts here are pitiful. Small hoses and a, a lot of hysteria. Think, you know, this is like a black neighborhood. They won't be here. You know? 
Who's to blame for this? Who's to blame for starting the fire that jumped over here and, and is eating people's houses now? Well, I don't really know, because it was on uh, it was on fire. The, the first building uh -huh. was on fire. Well, so that had it. The, the fire started in a mini mall. The mini mall had been looted, as have so many around here, then set on fire. The fire jumped from the mini mall, the uh, the, the stores there, to uh, someone's back. Uh, mall. We now took our way almost to Wilshire Boulevard, uh, coming over approximately at uh, uh, Kingsley, Harvard, near Normandy. And we're going to go over the high rise uh, buildings. Uh, past the um, Equitable Building, that's the picture in the center of your picture right now, mm -hmm. and that's roughly uh, where Normandy meets Wilshire Boulevard. There's the Thrifty Corporation headquarters across the street. That was uh, closed down because of the tr troubles that they were having, and now you can see the <coughs> base of that fire. Oh yeah, very that's, clear. Do you know what what that structure is that's putting out that dense black smoke? I cannot tell at this point. Looks like it's right at Vermont, and that would be uh, 7th Street. This would be 6th in Vermont. But there are two fires. There's one of the reasons we have the wide base. Two fires. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, on both sides of the corner. And that I would, would uh, and again, just pouring through the roof. And again, Hal, there are now three fires. If you go up, if you go up Vermont a little more, to um, to probably 8th Street. So it's an 8th and 9th, and uh, we're probably over a little now. I look down below, and there's a burned out fire here, but this, these are, t are yeah. we're gonna go through the smoke here for a moment, so we're gonna probably lose the visibility, but you can see what a, a roaring fire we have. 200 people. Now the police earlier had a line directly across Santa Monica Boulevard and it appears as what they were doing is just protecting the fire department as they tried to fight this fire. And you can see some of the people that have scattered as a result of the policemen um, actually charging forward uh, on these people. Just a few moments ago, uh, oh, 50 to 75 of them ran around the block as, it, as the policemen uh, moved forward. And uh, on the other side, this would be the east side, Harold, we can see that the police have several cars that are lined up protecting the firemen on that side. Yeah, and they're still trying to fight this fire. As you can see, this thing is really burning strongly right now. A very intense fire. Carol, back to you. All right, Ron, thank you. We are losing our signal somewhat. Uh, Captain Ron will get into a position where he can uh, feed us a clear picture but of what's we happening. we actually had at the high point, Harold, about 300 fires, we believe, burning yeah, in various over the parts last of the city. Hours. And mm -hmm. now we're down to about 30. And, and the fire department has done such a valiant job in mm -hmm. a very, very, very difficult situation, being attacked while they're trying to put out these fires. And yeah. the Chief, police department on hand to try to help them in that process. Chief Manning said this morning at a news conference uh, with the mayor and with the police chief that at one point, last night there were three fires per minute erupting throughout Los Angeles they have battled those fires all night and into the day but uh, we are seeing and experiencing more and more arson they take care of one area and an arsonist will strike in another now we want to repeat again that the Los Angeles Police Department has an obligation to shepherd these firefighters in there because they go in unprotected they need the protection of the uh, of the LAPD what the Los Angeles Police Department would like to do would be able to put together a contingent of officers large enough so that they can gain control of a particular pocket of resistance. It is uh, unwise and unsafe for police officers to go into an area when they are outnumbered numerically. We are putting those officers' lives at stake, and right now we're not going to, uh, we're not going to see any of this. This, Laura, is uh, some earlier video that uh, we witnessed today. This was a beauty supply shop that uh, we saw looted for the better part of five hours today. Hard to believe that there was that much stuff inside. You know, and it's a scene that we have seen repeated over and over again. There you see two There's young people. There's your happy shoppers it, right there. It's really a sad situation. You see sometimes parents taking their kids in tow to these events. Mm -hmm. What a horrible example for them. And we've talked about the feeding frenzy of it all. One person goes in and then, you know, some other people go in and neighbors and pretty soon you, you have 20, 30, 40 people involved in these scenes. And when you approach these people, the first thing they will tell you about is that they are very upset about the decision in the Rod King beating case but none have been able to tell us or none has been able to tell us exactly the correlation between what took place in uh, Sami Valley yesterday and this kind of uh, uh, lawlessness that has been uh, running rampant in certain parts of Los Angeles throughout today.
We should also point out that many of the good folks of South Central Los Angeles have, say, have said that they're very upset about all this. One of the big mm -hmm. concerns, of course, has been that those areas have been blighted for many years. Um, people who live in South Central LA have said that there is no work. There is no place for the children to play. And now we see what is left of that community, much of it going up in smoke in the last 24 yeah, hours. A very sad situation. Well, we never fully recovered from the Watts riots. No, let's, let's remember that. Linda Breakstone is uh, online right now. Linda, we. Uh, our reporter Jill McMahon and his cameraman Dave Bussey were accosted by a very hostile crowd. And our cameraman Dave Bussey, at gunpoint, apparently had to hand over his camera. And uh, the people don't want their pictures taken. And uh, this is uh, one of the reasons they, they don't want uh, our presence there, because they would rather do this with impunity. Uh, Ron, uh, Captain Ron, is uh, over the scene. Santa Captain Monica Ron. and Western, this is where this is. Santa Harold, Monica, the Sears. the Sears store at Santa Monica and Western. Captain Ron? OK, Harold, uh, we're out here still over Santa Monica and Western at this time. We're looking at the back side or north side of the department store of Sears. And these people have just broken into it uh, within the last oh, three or four minutes now. And you can see the first articles of, of uh, merchandise that is being transported out of this store. A lot of people here, we're estimating all oh, 75 to 100 people out here at this time. Now, just a few moments ago, there was a police ship out here flying directly over this thing. Other than the helicopter, however, we have seen no other ground units to support this operation. And all we're looking at here is people breaking into it and beginning taking out this uh, merchandise out of the Sears store. Uh, Harold, back to you. Well, now I think I've seen everything. Uh, is that a yellow cab bringing somebody in to go in and loot a store? Uh, I, I can't believe my eyes. I'm not sure. We have, we've been telling you throughout the day that people have been driving into these parking lots, getting out, going in, looting the store, getting back. But for so help me, that looked like a, a yellow cab uh, pulling up and uh, maybe just eyeballing the situation. Oh, whoops, he decides sure now like he'll one. pull up and uh, he'll assess the situation. And uh, we'll keep an eye on him just to see if he's going to get caught up in this frenzy. This is what's been happening today, Laura. You were out uh, in the Wilshire area today out around Beverly Hills, and uh, you pointed out there that people get so caught up in the emotion of it all they start participating in uh, this kind of uh, law breaking and uh, they don't give it a second thought i will tell you last night i noticed that there was a yellow cab that brought in some protesters and we were on uh, wilshire boulevard down by the federal building last night at about well actually it was early this morning it must have been one o'clock in the morning uh, it is a very strange occurrence out there. Well, that, that would be a very, uh, I must tell you, that would be a, an atypical event in Southern, uh, only in Southern California would people show up for a riot in a yellow cab. Uh, we have been telling you about the looting. Let's talk about the, uh, the toll on uh, humanity. Right now, they have just updated the death toll to 14 in Los Angeles, and that number may or may not include th three people who died last night in a high-speed chase over in the Beverly Hills. Nothing here, policeman, and government you cannot help me. Do you, you know? do you feel attacked at all to some degree? Pardon me? Do you feel that you have been personally attacked in this? Oh, yeah, of course okay. it does, All right, John, thank you very much. We'll uh -huh. go back to you in the studio. All right. Fire de some compliment we, we There's a fire department briefing going on now. Harvey Levin, take it live. Okay, this is well, Chief David Parsons. 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 He's giving an overview of the situation. I haven't seen any of them that up close uh, actually being started, but I think it's very obvious that these are you, fires are, are being set. Are you pulling in a lot of uh, departments from other cities? Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, uh, within the last two hours, we've uh, requested uh, 32 strike teams, and those consist of five fire companies and uh, one chief officer each uh, from outside the city. Chief, does the geographic, does the, does the fact that it's all spreading out make it increasingly difficult for you to fight these fires since it's over a wider area uh, as the hours go by? Uh, yes, it does. We started out yesterday with, uh, with two staging areas with a major command post here. Uh, at the present time, we're staging companies in uh, four and possibly even five. This is a reminder to Europeans about racial tensions, current racial tensions, in their own cities. This is the BBC in London. Over the past few hours, hundreds of looters have been out on the streets again and more fires have been started. Radio and TV stations on the continent have been updating their citizens, interrupting regular programming with news from Los Angeles. One British paper headlined today, Hell Breaks Loose in Race Hate City. In Paris, the respected Le Mans newspaper said the rioting has shocked an America already questioning itself more than usual about its values.
President Bush condemned the killings and destruction and said the Justice Department is intensifying its own investigation of the police conduct in the King beating. And the frustration all of us felt seeing helpless victims pulled from vehicles and assaulted, it was hard to, not to turn our eyes away. But we must not turn our eyes away, and we must keep on working to create a climate of understanding and tolerance and condemn a climate of bigotry and fear. People of this country are deeply divided by race. They don't trust each other across racial lines. This will aggravate that mistrust. And I think, you know, until people start to sit down across the table in a room and talk to one another and reach out to one another, until we have some healing and some attempt to work out a common strategy on these problems, we're going to be in trouble. This is the result of 12 or 15 years of herb throws of drugs and guns and self-destruction. In Atlanta today, as Harold just mentioned, there was a demonstration against the verdicts. It started off as peaceful, with hundreds of people marching in the downtown area, but it then turned violent. Cars were smashed and other property damaged. 26 people were hurt. And there were more demonstrations in other cities throughout the United States. An international team is coming here to Los Angeles this summer and other cities to investigate racism in the United States. And as we mentioned uh, a moment ago about the Korean businesses, the Korean foreign ministry in Seoul today is expressing a lot of concern about the safety of 300,000 Korean Americans here in Los Angeles. The Korean Americans themselves, though, saying today that they did not feel that they were being singled out by the looters out there today, that there's merely a high number of Korean-owned businesses in that part of town. That's true, but the ministry in Seoul feels that they are being singled out and they are expressing deep concern. As we mentioned, uh, as uh, Mark Coogan mentioned, the, uh, uh, the case where the Korean merchant shot and killed the the black young woman, uh, yes, that is being mentioned in Korea tonight as one of the reasons they think those businesses are being targeted. They also, uh, while we say they haven't been targeted uh, citywide, we do know for a matter of fact, though, that uh, the shop owners in South Central have been looted and uh, have been burned out. Uh, many, many of the fires that we saw last night and early today were, in fact, uh, the Korean stores, the liquor stores and the mm -hmm. like. More than 100. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alex, for that update. There. We do have a reminder here, Harold, um, getting information. Do not tie up the phone lines. It is getting to be a, a big, big problem. Stay off of the phone unless you absolutely have to use it and, and leave it open for emergency phone calls that need to be made. I think we told you a little bit earlier that I was out in the field. I was out at Crescent Heights and Wilshire Boulevard on the west side. We're going to look at some videotape that was shot earlier today, if we can roll that tape. There you see that authorities had gathered at that corner. This man, a suspect in looting. Authorities there told me at the scene that he actually was running away, trying to escape when they caught him. He was taking the CD player that you see there that he had uh, allegedly taken out of a, uh, an electronics store just a little bit west on Wilshire Boulevard. They claim there were about a dozen people there at time, times wielding bats, going up and down Wilshire Boulevard, breaking windows, taking whatever they could. And um, they said the difficulty with their job today was that they were frequently outnumbered by looters. On this particular occasion, they were not, and so they took a suspect in tow. But the problem has been that they have not had enough backup, and the sergeant there, the LAPD sergeant at the scene, said to me, we need help. We need the National Guard to help us to secure the area, which of course did happen today. As many as 40,000 National Guard supposed to be in Southern California. Sadly, we have heard from people who have been arrested and those who uh, have spoken to us on camera after looting stores in Southern California that uh, there has been a sense that this is their right, that they should be able to conduct themselves this way, that they should not answer to it. Police anywhere near the store, and the looting continued for some time. The operators of the store apparently fled when the gang members first ran into the store. Inside the store, the looters were stripping the shelves, and some even looking for certain items. Why are you doing this? Why? Why? Yeah, why? Hey, everybody's doing, doing it. One looter attacked our photographer, and he suffered a cut hand. Now, a lot of those looters got into cars and drove off on into Hollywood and we now see more fires. So the looting and the fires seem to jump together. You knew they were gang members because they were wearing colors, right? They gave signs, they said they were gang members, where well, they attacked 
my photographer. By the way, his, his, his finger's okay. It He's was okay. sliced. Well, one of the things we've noticed, there seems to be a pattern that a fire will bro break out and firefighters will respond. Police will be there to protect the firefighters. Then short, a short distance away is where the looting will occur. It's almost as if the fire is set deliberately and the looting is planned. That's exactly what happened here. The looting was one block away and the Two police officers that were there were guarding the firemen. They heard the shooting. They asked me about the shooting. It was taking place one block away, like mm -hmm. I told you, down there at the uh, auto parts mm -hmm. store and a shoe store. And it's hopscotching all across the city exactly. right now. Exactly. And you could see them get in their cars and move out. It wasn't just neighbors walking up. These were people that came from somewhere and were going somewhere else, and you could tell their intent. Of course, we've seen a lot of other looters who are, are children and women as well, looting things, risking their lives, risking uh, arrest and their lives for things, uh, worthless things in, in lots of cases. Angela Estelle is at Pico in Fairfax at, at a fire Big that's fire broke there. out there. Angela? Uh, yes, Bree. What you can see is that building is fully engulfed. It's an Albee's uh, electronic store. At uh, about 3 o'clock, there were people uh, looting that store, and now you can see it's on fire. Now, this is on the southwest corner of Pico at Fairfax. And then if you swing the camera right on around here, Phil, let's just go right over here. Uh, there's a Vons grocery store right across the street, and what's happening over there is people are looting the store. They're going in and uh, taking out uh, whatever they can in the grocery store. We've seen people uh, walk right by us with carts full of food. So that's what's going on here at the uh, corner of Pico and Fairfax. It's just... Uh, a duplicate uh, all, all around town. This is what's happening. It's everywhere. That yeah. appears to be that pattern, Angela. So you, the, the fire broke out first, then the looting resulted? Well, no. At this Albies across the street that you're looking at right now, first there was the looting and then the fire. Typically, I personally drove by this store and saw the looting taking place at around th between 3 and 4 o'clock this afternoon, and now it's on fire. All right, those are two angles of the same fire. Typically, uh, the looting does happen first and, and then the fire. Uh, we, we've now also gotten information that the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department is asking hospital employees to report to, to work at hospitals within the curfew zone, uh, but only with their hospital identification so that they can pass through curfew police lines. So if you're reporting to work in a hospital tonight, you'll need your hospital identification to get through the curfew lines. And everybody else, uh, unless you absolutely have to be out. Uh, well, let's go back to Angela. Angela, what's happened down there on the ground? Something new? Okay, we were just attacked here uh, on this corner. We had just finished telling you what was happening across the street. A man ran up and started striking the camera with a hammer, and then he ran across the street. No ID on the guy, but we sure did see him. He ran up, he struck the, our camera, and he also hit the cameraman on the shoulder with a hammer. So those are the kind of people running the streets tonight here in Los Angeles. Are you uh, the camera, uh, who's our camera operator tonight with you? The cam Yeah, uh, Phil Ronnie. Phil is right, okay. Phil. He's a little bit uh, shaky but he's okay, he's managing with the camera, as you can see, and the camera, I guess, is still working, because you can yeah, see Yeah, 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 it's, uh, it's uh, getting to be a tougher job tonight. Yes. Uh, okay. Cover yourselves. Angela, thank you very much. Uh, another aerial view of another fire. Uh, we were told just a short time ago that uh, at about 6.20, there were 165 active fires burning right then uh, across Los Angeles. Of those, 36 were structure fires. Fire department obviously cannot get to the mall. We saw a little bit earlier there was a fire at a strip mall. It spread to some houses, and the fire department just didn't have the manpower to come and put out the fire at those houses. People were using garden hoses to try to, to douse the flames, and they were not having much success at that. We're even having to be uh, selective about what fires uh, we take coverage on because there are way too many for us to cover as well. But here's one that we see right from uh, our roof here in Hollywood at KCBS TV studios. Yeah, that's, that's the rooftop view. Uh, you can see the, the sky there and, and over and over you've heard the, uh, uh, the comparison made to the oil field fires in Kuwait, but just look at the sky. And if you're anywhere downwind of those fires, uh, anywhere. Suspects. We've uh, just been uh, told by uh, people flying into uh, Los Angeles on commercial uh, aircraft that the uh, smoke in the fires can be seen from 70 miles away. 70. 70. 7 zero. Uh, can, there was, um, uh, once again, this is the unedited tape uh, taken in the Hollywood area about, um, well, just moments ago, just a few minutes ago. Could we go uh, back aloft to, uh, uh, this is a live picture. It gives you a perspective uh, showing 
uh, what one view of the uh, city of Los Angeles uh, panning around and uh, you can see what it looks like uh, from uh, the top of a building it's from a rooftop of one of the one of the tall buildings uh, here in Hollywood and I understand what we're looking at is 6th and Western. That's a fire, that's right. That's 6th and Western. And you'll notice that even though the uh, sun has not set, it still has one hour uh, to go before sunset and before the curfew, it seems as though night has descended upon that part of the city. The sky's dark, look at it. Yeah, now we're moving around uh, toward the west. And it's an indication, at least to the viewers and to the people of Los Angeles, that this is what they've been waiting for for a long, long time. Now, today, Mayor Bradley said that uh, they'd been discussing this for some time. Uh, you kind of wonder as to why there was such a long wait. He says that there's a couple of thousand, and he hopes that it's enough. If there isn't enough, well, then they're going to get some more. Well, when you start looking around and you see all the fires that are going on, and when you start looking at all the things that are going on, not only here in South Central Los Angeles, but they're spreading throughout Los Angeles, you kind of wonder as to uh, the infinite wisdom uh, the, of the choices here that uh, probably let's bring more so we can uh, quell the disturbances a lot sooner. Now, here's an indication now that the stores have been looted, but there's still plenty of stuff inside. But the presence of these National Guard members that are here is not only good for these two stores, but also for the various uh, uh, gasoline stations. There's three of them. There's a jack-in-the-box across the street. There's a, a mini shop or mini mall across the way. A couple of the buildings have been burned. Some of them have been untouched. But at least the presence will assure people that the, root, the looters won't be coming by. You know, one of the things about the looters that's been reported, they go to certain areas, the uh, police come, they split, uh, they go elsewhere. So it's a hit and miss, hit and miss. It's a tactic that's been used since yesterday. So at least uh, there's some kind of consolation or at least some kind of uh, confidence builder that uh, the National Guard is here. Uh, I might add that this uh, location here, we had a lot of uh, California Highway Patrol units. They've been working out on the perimeter. We had about um, 50 units of the uh, Sheriff's Department. I talked to one of the lieutenants, Lieutenant um, um, Osborne, and he indicated to me that they were here specifically to arrest looters. He couldn't give me an exact number of how many looters had been, uh, had been arrested thus far, but he said that that was their whole objective. All of the Sheriff's Department units, they've been scattered throughout the uh, locations. And, uh, you know, there's a, always that, there are these two little Spanish-speaking children. Uh, she has her money in her hand, and she came up and asked me in Spanish that where she could buy some uh, wheat. And I told her, uh, sweetheart, uh, you can't go inside because uh, it's, it's closed. And I told her, uh, let me just talk, ask her, Te dije que se había quemado, verdad? Sí. ¿Y cómo te parece lo que ha pasado aquí? Muy mal. I asked her, you know, you knew that it burned down. She says, yeah. And I said, well, what do you think of something like this? She says, muy mal, that, that's bad. Mm -hmm. So this is the impression that these little kids are starting to get. In some areas, they bring their kids and they do the looting. These little kids are out here to buy some food, and they can't because the store has been uh, closed because of looting. So at least, again, the National Guard is here. Uh, there's order, and uh, hopefully this will be the first step in bringing about a change, restoring some kind of semblance of order here in the city of Los Angeles. Reporting live, I'm Henry Alfaro. Back to you. Okay. Right. Thank you, Henry. I want to correct something that I said earlier. I said 40,000 of the National Guard. It is 4,000. I apologize for that. It has been a very long night. We haven't had much sleep here, many of us that I witnessed news. Also, I wanted to reflect on the face of those little kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember being a small child back in 1965 and watching on television, watching the riots. Right. And I remember asking my mother at that time, as a little girl growing up in L.A., why are they doing that? And she said, I don't know, honey. And I, I think it's the same answer we would give a to our kids today. the same thing. <sighs> We also should point out the, the National Guard people coming in now, 2,000 now. We, we've got to get off this. 12-gauge shotgun in his hand. And if we tilt the camera down a little bit and we see the group of men below, you see a lot of Korean businessmen batting together with their shotguns and handguns. Let's go in a little bit on that. Maybe a bit difficult to see. I think you get the idea. This is what it's come to, sort of uh, reluctant vigilantes, you might say. Uh, trying to protect their own. We've got one man here who's going to tell us exactly why you've done this. Well, you, you were telling me this isn't your favorite thing to do, but you feel you have to. What has been happening here? Okay, uh, we're uh, with the Korean youth uh, team. And but we, why are you doing this? Okay, for uh, protect our community. 
You that, don't. Do you, you were telling me you weren't real happy about having to do this, though? No, I don't. I don't think so. Have, have people come by? Have they shot at you? Uh, not here, but uh, same other stores. Yes. Yeah. So, so you'll be out here all night if you have to. Yes, we will. You you are armed as well, right? Yes. Can you show me what you what uh, you have? Uh, thirty eight. So can you take? Uh, can't take it out. It's a thirty eight. Okay. Well, believe me, they're taking it seriously because they know what's been going on all around here. And if any, if, if what we're going to show you now is any example, words uh, fail me almost. The pictures definitely speak louder than words. There's the looting in a camera shop just down the street. Incredible. Most of them teenagers, mostly uh, Hispanic, some white, some black, went into this shop grabbing anything they could. We tried to ask them uh, why they were stealing. They would just laugh. They'd run away. Uh, a few of them threw us uh, some hand gang signals, and that was basically our cue to get out of there. You see us trying to ask people. He denied he was taking anything, and as you see him going there, proceeding right into the camera store. Pretty incredible pictures, isn't it? Uh, they uh, heard that the police might be coming, and that's why they're taking off at that point. This is the kind of thing you see all over Koreatown, all over South Central, and you see it every few stores now. Before it was once in a while, now you see it all the time. I saw that Patrick was showing us some pictures of people with guns on top of their roofs. This is the first day I've been seeing something like that. Uh, so far, no injuries here, but this man we have has had some real problems. You have a business down the street, and what happened to you today? Yes, uh, today we have a uh, uh, gun battle uh, between the looters and, uh, and our the security guard. What happened? Then one of the security guard was uh, shot by a uh, shotgun that he died instantly. Someone that drove by and shot yeah, him? Yeah, shot him the shotgun, so his, uh, all his uh, head is gone. His, uh, tower. What is that like for you now? I mean, I, I know you're shaking. Is there a way for you to describe what it is like for you as a merchant, as a businessman, to, to see someone that's worked for you die like that? Yeah, we are very upset. First of all, yeah, we like to protect our town. Otherwise, for in, the, in the future, then once our, our, our business is gone down, then they'll come back again. So yeah. we got to show them that we mean defense our business here. Thank you very much for talking to us. I know no, it wasn't well, easy. Yeah. Now he he's someone who clearly understands why people have band together with their own uh, with their own weapons, having to fight back. It's not something they want to do. They feel like they have to do it. And after all, the police have been telling us there aren't enough of them to go around. There aren't enough fire officials to go around. And the proof of that is the one fire after the next around here we see that continues to burn without any fire officials around. It is. Um, and eerie, it is a grotesque, it's a, it's a frightening sight in Koreatown tonight. These people, Elizabeth, seem to feel that they may actually be involved in some uh, kind of uh, gunfight tonight or, or, or... I'm sorry, what was the first part of your question? Well, you know, uh, when we first saw these people with guns, we security people in a situation yeah. like this want to be armed, but then we hear a merchant whose employee's uh, head was blown off. Uh, what yeah, I can tell you, they are scared to death. You, they hear these sirens all the time going by, more fire trucks. Uh, they are worried that people are, and one thing the Koreans say is they feel like they're being unfairly targeted by the gangs in the area. They have felt this before the riots and they certainly feel it now. They just want to be prepared, they say. Uh, they don't want to start anything if they don't have to. Obviously, these are desperate people. This, these are desperate times. They feel like it's almost a last resort. It, it, it has to be a last resort. Uh, the young man we saw and the, the gentleman, the merchant that uh, you talked to, Yeah talking about gun battles. Now, obviously, this is against the law. These people cannot have permits to carry a gun. As we know, only law officials, law enforcement officials, get those permits, or people with special permits. Well, I think what he meant by gun battles was somebody, it was a drive-by person that came by and started shooting at him. This and he me. had his own security there, guard, who was, was, was starting to shoot back, and the security guard, the Korean security guard, lost. That's what he was speaking about. Very, very right. frightening because the last thing we want to see is citizens against citizens. All right, thank That's you sure. very, very much, Elizabeth. Um, there's no way of telling right now how many people have been left homeless in South Central Los Angeles. In the beginning last night, uh, it was only against commercial establishments, and now we're hearing that homes are torched. At least 100 people. Before I came up here, just listening to the fire transmissions, and uh, it was just unbelievable. They would have structure fires and no units available. Uh, they'd take task forces and they would cut them in half. They'd say, Chief, you take half of it, give that to Chief uh, so-and-so for another fire. Uh, county fire, you... Uh, that is correct. In fact, you can see the light uh, smoke uh, behind the Coca-Cola sign. 
So that fire is right on Hollywood Boulevard. It's next to the uh, Pacific Theater. And uh, again, another fire that started in the last few minutes. We're looking down Hollywood Boulevard now. There is a police presence. The traffic is being diverted, at least the uh, westbound traffic is. And uh, so we're going to go through the smoke right now. We'll lose a little visibility. And then next to that, uh, behind a, uh, a Coca-Cola sign, you see a white smoke kind of uh, close to the ground. It you can see Fredericks up. there. And there's yeah. Fredericks. You can the see pink awnings. It's kind of easy to spot. <clears throat> I, I haven't seen from this point whether we have any uh, looters at that point, but you can see the smoke coming right out of the uh, building next to Fredericks. And that's going to burst into flames into just a few moments. Well, that is the uh, Fredericks that we had a report uh, that there was looting going on at that location. If you can uh, get through that smoke uh, to show us, uh, we might get an, an insight into that. And you uh, see that smoke just pouring out of the window there right next to Fredericks. Uh, I'm looking in the back to see if there might be uh, looters back there. I can't spot anybody, but that, that building's going to break into flames in the next few moments. In fact, uh, Stan, the smoke is coming through the top. Stan, uh, while we stay on this picture, let me, um, let me mention that with 26 minutes to go before the curfew, the city of Santa Monica has also declared a curfew for the entire city of Santa Monica uh, from uh, sundown to sunrise. So. Uh, in about 26, 25, 26 minutes, that curfew goes into effect. And also in Compton, and also in Inglewood, and in Los Angeles. And Los Angeles. Uh, just got word, Hal, that uh, Sammy's camera on Beverly and La Brea, fairly well known to camera buffs, is burning. Beverly and La Brea. We uh, went by that, Larry, and it is uh, practically gutted through, uh, burned to the ground. A lot of people standing around. Mm -hmm. We were. We passed that on our way to this fire on the boulevard. But you can see the significance of this, that right on Hollywood Boulevard, two big fires. And uh, if that can happen, it can happen any place all over the this part of the city. Uh, OK, on the uh, Sammy's uh, camera shop, uh, fire. I understand that uh, Marta Waller is uh, at that location. Marta, can uh, can you come in with that report? Yeah, uh, Sammy's camera is actually about a block west of La Brea on Beverly Boulevard. If you look back down here, we're seeing something that we saw earlier today. It is yet another group of volunteer firefighters who are getting uh, the uh, short lesson in how to fight fires with uh, these great big hoses. Not only are they sitting here, but if you look right over here, you can see yet another group of them. There are all kinds of people standing out here. I think most of them are just absolutely stunned that this could have happened in their neighborhood. This is, as all the others, a very, very large fire. And it looks to me as though they have the uh, most of it out because we're seeing white smoke. But there is no question that there's nothing left inside. It was a camera store. and electronics uh, and such things but the street is filled with spectators and there is a very eerie sense of, of concern here. Marta let me ask you if you see any presence at all of the National Guard there. I'm sorry say again? If you ha see any presence of the National Guard in that location. Not yet I have only seen the National Guard in one place um, so far today and that was down at uh, Crenshaw and Coliseum. I have not seen any National Guard other than that, um, I don't know that that means that they're not going to show up here. I just don't think they've arrived yet. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming, I mean, it has become something of a problem, a logistical nightmare, because these fires are breaking out all over the city. And they're breaking out in little pockets, and they're miles apart. They're just far enough apart that there just aren't enough resources okay, to Marta, go around. Okay, Marta, we want to... Uh, 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 just one quick question before we go back to Sam. Does anyone have any idea or any concept of, of how this started? Did anyone see the beginning of it? Did someone drive by, walk by, throw anything? Nobody. Apparently, there is some word that that they've been made that some of these looters have been making Molotov cocktails down at a gas station on Melrose and bringing them up into the area. And in fact, the police are in their riot gear down here and there is at this time a search for what is reported to be a man with a gun 
we're going to go find out what's going on there, and as soon as we have more information, we'll get right back okay, to Okay, we are now going to go back to Stan Chambers in SkyCam 5. Stan? Cal, this fire is three blocks, three blocks west of Vine Street on Hollywood Boulevard, right next to the Pacific Theater. There are several people, many people, standing on the streets and on the sidewalks. There are at least two police cars. We see no fire units on the scene. Uh, we do see uh, Fire 2, a, um, I think that is a county fire unit, a copter in the air that's uh, circling over the fire. So uh, a lot of communication, a lot of uh, uh, command decisions having to be made. And uh, look at that, that's a tremendous funnel. Uh, it's just a spinning funnel of the clouds and the flames, and that whole building is, uh, is completely lost. And again, it is uh, that, that very uh, prestigious corner of um, Hollywood Boulevard. And it's a corner location. Stan, and Hollywood and where once again? I, I, I'm trying to read the sign, but if you want to check the Thomas Brothers, it's three blocks west of Vine Street. That's about Wilcox. I think that's it. I think that yes. would probably be it, Larry. Thank you. But look at that, that building is completely consumed and it's right adjacent to another two-story building that has one, two, three, four different offices. And uh, that's the exposure and uh, it looks like the flames are burning over into that building. And it started on the roof again, didn't it? It's, it appears to. Okay, that is the corner of uh, Whitley and Hollywood. Whitley? Yeah. Whitley, all right. Now, what, what building is that? Can you make it out what it is? Uh, I can't, uh, Hal. Uh, maybe Martin, if he gets in real close, can see the sign, but that mm -hmm. sign has pretty well been, uh, been destroyed by the flames. But the incredible moment of, of seeing a fire set like that on Hollywood Boulevard, and then a block away, Another fire, still spewing gray smoke, but you know the black smoke's gonna break out at any time. You know, Stan, if these were normal times, this single fire, with its intensity and the importance of where it's burning, would probably be our lead story on the news. Mm -hmm. Larry, now it's just another fire. You know, not only that, but you would probably have uh, two dozen pieces of equipment fighting there, a yeah. uh, hundred plus firemen. Mm -hmm. yep. We're going over that building next to Frederick's right now, and I can see right directly below us the smoke billowing through the roof, and I can see the first flames uh, about to break through. Now, is that the... Uh, that's not Frederick's of Hollywood, is it? It is right next right door next to door. Frederick's. Mm -hmm. there, Frederick's. It is. there it there goes. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Now think how quickly that, that happened. Uh, whatever they threw inside uh, boiled up to a maximum intensity. And in that short time that we, we have been up here, have ac actually uh, has burned through the roof. And now there's another exposure, another building that is in danger. The building next to it, it says Hollywood Magic. That's a slim, very narrow building. And then next to that is the, uh, the Frederick store. You mentioned earlier on a on a normal news night, not only would the fire be the lead story, and uh, the 100 firefighters, they would probably have a fire knocked down within, say, 30 or 40 minutes, even of that magnitude. It's right, Jan, and they do that every day, as you know, how, how quickly they can handle them, and they never let the fires get to this intensity. Well, Stan, uh, this may seem incongruous, but uh, under uh, certain communications laws, I must identify the station. KTLA, Channel 5, Los Angeles. Back to you, Stan. Stan, who are those people we see in the back there? Somebody is doing something back. Can you tighten mm -hmm. up on that shot? Well, you're, you're going away from <coughs> now, but we saw two rather suspicious-looking people in the back mm -hmm. of that store doing something. It actually looked who like that they were trying to go into the back door almost. Uh, behind uh, Frederick's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, two people. Uh, they're... Two people in the alleyway there uh, appeared that they tried to kick through the back door to get in. Is that uh, what they were doing? But I'm afraid the flames were just too intense. Were they actually trying to enter the building that is on fire? It, it appeared that way, Jan. Yeah. Did, did you see them? Uh, Martin uh, Clancy, who uh, has the camera there with a the close-up lens, said, yep, they tried to. Uh, Stan, uh, 
We'll be getting back to you in just a moment, but maybe we can answer the question of uh, where's the National Guard by going to Ed Arnold, uh, who is with some units of the National Guard. Ed, do you read us? Ed Arnold? Talked to one of the, uh, the MPs that came through. He would not go on camera. He said he's not the spokesperson. He couldn't talk, but he said that they have a number of units right now at 48th and Crenshaw. <clears throat> he said down in that area is where, where they have the guard. He said there's also a group at the, at the central headquarters and then a number of them here. They're going to be dispatched in a few minutes. What we're going through now is basically a shift change. Uh, I think you can see over my shoulders where a large mm. number of the, the LAPD people are coming in now. And again, these are guys that arrived a few minutes ago. They're going to give some relief to some of the others. Great numbers of them. Now, I'll tell you one of the things that's uh, the only bright thing kind of that wants to make you smile is a few minutes ago, they had a, a, a couple of cars come through with pizza for the guys. You don't have to take a shot of the box just to tell them what went on. And, and very quick, like, I've got a couple of guys that have been standing here, and I want you to find out that not all the kids down in this area are bad news. These are, these are some good kids. What, what is your name? James Booker. James, what is your reaction to all that's been going on? Whoa. It's kind of, it's like, it reminds me of a war zone. Like on the news, they said it reminds them of Kuwait. That's how it reminds me of, and it's like bad because it makes our neighborhood look like it's bad, and it's not that bad. What, what does it make? Well, it looks on the roof, it, it looks to us uh, that the man on the roof has, has some kind of automatic weapon, but... Judd McElveen's sitting next to me here, and he's far more uh, familiar with weaponry than I am. He says it looks to be a 9mm Uzi, Uzi. This has to be a disturbing sight to LAPD and uh, to the National Guard uh, officers out there as well. The, the troops uh, have to be very concerned about this scene. Absolutely. All right, Jody Baskerville is now surrounded by fire. She's been trying to retreat from the position. Let's go and see where she is now. Jody, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Bree. We moved away from that other location, and I'm happy to report that uh, shortly after we left, uh, two fire trucks rolled up. We are just about two blocks away in the same area. As you can see, we've got a uh, fully engulfed shopping center on the far side of the street. It's been going for, uh, oh gosh, like this for about the last 15, 20 minutes. And um, the firefighters went past this one to get to that other fire that we were at because that was kind of burning more out of control. Now, right behind me on, in another shopping center, just a little bit smaller, there is another fire that's going pretty, pretty quickly around here. There we go. Yeah, there's another one. And, and the uh, firefighters also went past this one because they're going to concentrate on that other one for right now. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of the residents who have been watching this. And, uh, you know, to say they're upset is an understatement. Uh, they're, you know, they're seeing their neighborhoods uh, burn right down to the ground around them. And, uh, you know, and also, I don't know if you can see, uh, Michael and Bree, but there are a lot of people out, and we, we were talking about that curfew earlier. Let's go back over here, Carl. That curfew earlier, and I'm wondering how they're going to, you know, really uh, enforce that, because um, they've got their hands full now with uh, burning buildings everywhere down here. Jody, you said earlier that you uh, feared for what might be a blow-up. That, that uh, store didn't blow, did it? Yes, there, yeah, well, there was um, some kind of solvent in the dry cleaner, and it was starting to explode as we were down there, and that's when we decided to pull back. If right. You can hear the sirens. The police are coming into this area now, so maybe that means that more fire trucks will follow. I hope so, because um, uh, we've got things going on uh, either side of the street, up and down this block. Let's hope uh, that does mean uh, the arrival of uh, uh, fire engines there. Uh, we're going to switch scenes right now, Jody. Go to Pat LaLama. She is in uh, South L.A. A furious fire burning there behind you, Pat. This, Michael, this is the worst fire I've seen today. We're at Avalon and El Segundo. This is a shopping mall. Uh, all right, let me just move for a second. The shopping mall, major explosions happening here. A number of stores. I have the manager of one of the stores. Sir, tell me your name, please. My name is Carlos. And you manage which one? Uh, Domino's Pizza right here behind you. All right, when did this happen? About, about 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago? Yes. Do you know where it began? I think at the beauty supply right there next to the Chinese food store, uh, next to the Chinese food, it comes, the air is being, um, bringing the, the fire torch this way to, uh -huh. the, to the dentist's office, the Domino's okay. store. So it swept the clinic. whole mall? Yes. All right, so you're all right? Your employees are okay? No, we didn't open today. We were going to open today our first day. Look. You were going to open today for the, oh, it's an opening day for we, your store? Yes. Oh, my, okay. Uh, just amazing devastation around here. And in the meantime, yeah, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have Brian swing the camera around. There's another huge mall right behind me where people are just ransacking the heck out of this Clark joint, bringing out, uh, I'm sorry, what is it? The Clark Drug Store. Clark Drug Store, and they're getting everything they can get their hands on, but you've seen that all day, so this is really nothing new. Uh, but again, the flames are just uh, unreal. So we're going to move out of the way and stay safe.
Just, uh, just one of many. Um, it, it numbs the senses after a while. There's so many fires burning out of control. Uh, it, joining us in studio right now is uh, actor, community activist Edward James Almost. Many of you know him best for his role as uh, Jaime Escalante, and uh, a man much respected by, by the community in Los Angeles. And I know you want to make a, an appeal to people. Just basically, um, if there are any people out here that are listening to us right now that have a father or a mother or brother or sister, uh, a friend that is out on the street right now, I wish that they really would just take it upon themselves if they really love them to bring them in. Ask them to come into the house and stay in the house and, and stay there for the next, till at least daybreak tomorrow. Um, this plea is going out for all colors, races and creeds. Please, let's get off the streets. Let's really try to help in the situation. Uh, this is a devastating time for all of us. This is something that goes way back, way, way back. This didn't start with the Rodney King incident. This started long before that. This is the Rodney King incident was just the excuse in which able to explode in this way. It reminds me a lot, and uh, don't get me wrong, it's not that it, there's any comparison, but it reminds me of the behavior that was uh, understood when they went and they did the Boston Tea Party. They finally had had enough, and that's what is happening here. And, and people are walking out into the streets and saying, excuse me, man, but I've always wanted to have a lot of food. I've always wanted to have these clothes. I've always wanted to have the stereo. I've always wanted, I've never could. And the distance between the have and the have-nots has been too great. That's right. It's like the uh, South Americanization of the United States, and we seem to be witnessing what happens when people feel that deep frustration that the, uh, that the widening gap between rich and poor has gotten to the breaking point, and now they don't even care if their own neighborhoods uh, go up because it's... Uh, uh, it's part of the symptom and it's well, time to deal with the causes yeah that's what the problem is because we're going to stop this it's going to be squelched and they're going to make sure that everybody ends up understanding it but the problem is that they're not going to get to the root of it Edward, and you think this is that this is the jump off point do you think that this is going to be the thing that finally makes us look at each other in the eyes and say it is time for us to stop the violence and keep the peace I wish that I could say that this would be the one, Bree. I wish that this I mean, was going to be, the, yeah, that this would be the one that would make everybody in tune with the fact that we must start spending more of our dollars and our and. It, when you said it was Wilcox, it is uh, Hollywood and Wilcox uh, where that fire is, Dan, that you were flying over. But once again, um, it's up to the firefighting experts. I do wish we had an answer, though, as to why we could not use. Uh, uh, water bombers or helicopters to uh, assist in fighting these blazes. Now the danger is increasing a little bit. Excuse me, uh -huh. Jan. Uh, I've just been informed that uh, the camera crew, which we had atop the building that was giving us a different perspective of the Hollywood fire, is removing the camera equipment and the crew is removing itself because of shots fired. Okay, uh, uh, Larry, I think uh, we may have an answer to the question we've just been raising. Uh, is it Captain Ruda that we have on the line? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, Captain, we were just uh, raising a question here. Maybe you could help us as to why, why we do not use uh, water bombers or water dropping helicopters that we have in our arsenal to fight uh, brush fires. Uh, why we can't use them against uh, commercial or residential fires? If you will, sir, you can understand that uh, a helicopter has to do a close air support type mission to fly in low to drop only about 320 gallons of water that a, a low-level flying helicopter that the L.A. Fire Department has. The water that you see firefighters... The delay in getting the guard on the streets? No, I was in route here, so I probably didn't Well, he it. said that there were two things. There was a breakdown in communication, and there was a delay in getting ammunition for the guns. That's how he explained it. And they well, had a high-level meeting involving Daryl Gates and other officials from the guard and the sheriff's department today, and they ironed things out. Well, uh, it is not uncharacteristic of... Um, the way in which uh, the National Guard uh, is mobilized. For Move out of here pretty soon. Again, the corner of 6th and Western. And curfew or no curfew, we have to tell you that we are surrounded by at least 50 people around us right now. And they're telling us they're not going to go home. That is what they're telling us. And they also tell us they want to know where the National Guard is and where are the firefighters. That is what's going on right here, just near Hollywood. This is definitely spreading people behind over here and I don't know it's kind of far away but the smoke you can see it off into the hills you cannot see the hills anymore all you can see and smell is smoke live in Western Hollywood I'm Cristina Gonzalez or Western and 6th Avenue excuse me I'm Cristina Gonzalez back here in the studio now Cristina these people who are saying they're they're not going to go home are not the troublemakers once again we want, want to make that clear they're just afraid for their property well you know at this point it is very hard to tell the crowd around us is very calm there are people that have come out of the buildings there are a few people carrying things away and there are people driving who are very upset as you can see behind us just a few minutes ago we all had to duck 
literally, because a car drove by and we heard what we thought were gunshots and everybody just hit the street. I can't tell you who the people are. I know the people around us are from the buildings behind us, but outside our perimeter, those images that you saw of the looting are just down the street. And really? people are saying, we're not going home. Why they're not going home, I don't know. Whether they want to watch this or they're afraid for their life, you can see. Uh, there's a man here, and it is up to the citizens at this point to try to stop this fire. This is a man rolling a, ho a hose from apartment buildings down the street. And this is the firefighting effort you've got right here going. This is it. And we understand firefighters are busy in other locations, but we do have a whole block here. Now, there are no uh, houses on this particular block. It is all homes, and people have left here. And uh, like I said, there's a gun shop right down the street, so we're going to have to move a little bit farther away. To answer your question again, why they're not going home, half of them are here to watch this. We got a lot of looky loos. A lot of people are just going into stores, taking whatever they can, and there's some people who are just overwhelmed. I mean, a lot of people just don't want to go home and sit home anymore, I guess. Christina, we can't answer the question. We're trying to find the answer to the question about the, the people are asking you about where the national... Uh, very few of them from what you can see up here. If you look just behind me, just to give you an indication of how widespread this thing is, just behind me, we're looking at Hollywood, and you can see the smoke covering the hills over there. Now, I'll give you an indication of how far this thing is spread. That's Hollywood. If you move here with me, we're talking about Silver Lake, Echo Park, downtown Los Angeles, the Crenshaw District out this way, South Central Los Angeles, all covered with smoke. And if you look behind me to this direction, you can see the Wilshire District, and just to my left here, the Fairfax District. This is not an isolated incident. We are seeing a city in flames, and indeed, not very many bright spots uh, as, as you were speaking of. Hopefully, uh, with the intervention of the National Guard, we can get some law and order into uh, some of these areas where there's been massive looting. And uh, by the time the sun goes down, which is fairly soon, Perhaps we'll have some, sem some semblance of order, but uh, for sure we can expect that uh, this is going to be a very long night. Ross, Kim? All right, Brian. You know, it was interesting when we just saw some of the, close to us actually, some of those uh, pricey and fashionable Melrose uh, shopping district um, stores being looted. And, you know, you saw cars full of, what we've seen again and again, cars full of uh, young people, young kids just seizing this moment to go in and take whatever they want. And uh, uh, obviously they are not watching television, but we did have Arsenio Hall on here earlier, and he was making an appeal to the parents. Uh, please, please, if you're watching, Keep your son and daughter at home tonight, and let's just uh, get this over with. So yeah, there's, is... there's a thought. I mean, I think a lot of people are sitting at home right now watching this, and they're saying to themselves, how is this going to end? How is the police department going to get control of this situation? I can't answer that question. Right now, they are not answering that question because uh, we are certainly hoping they have a plan. We assume they have a plan, but they're not sharing that with us right now. But there are a lot of people just wondering, uh, feeling in their, in their, in their gut. How is this going to end? Are we going to get control of this? The answer is yes. There Some bad news for about 8,500 people uh, in the South Central area who are without power and have been since uh, sometime yesterday evening. And then beaten senseless by a gang of thugs yesterday. We all saw it happen. It was so horrible to watch. Word from Daniel Freeman Hospital just a couple of minutes ago that Denny is expected to pull through. Now, he underwent four hours of delicate neurosurgery. Denny is still listed in extremely critical condition most of the day, but tonight his condition has improved. It is still listed as... The uh, uh, organization says Embarcadero, Powell, Montgomery stations are closed. The Civic Center station is partially closed. The reason for that, more than a thousand protesters were marching down Market Street in downtown San Francisco, some using metal bars and pieces of concrete to smash stored and car windows. Police rested at... It applies to you. This is what is expected of you as a citizen, starting right now virtually. No person on public streets between sunset and sunrise. No sale of gasoline except to put the nozzle into your motor vehicle to put the gas into the car or truck. A uh, firefighter, rather, was shot uh, down in Everybody South Central. Everybody who's available is coming in now. We uh, need them, and we need them now. Uh, we're going back right. up to the helicopter right now with Cliff Welsh. Uh, where are you, uh, Cliff, and what are you looking at? Okay, Kelly, what we're looking at is, uh, well, you, you can see a couple of fires right in the foreground now. That's right near, oh, okay, uh, Dean, that's uh, right uh, about uh, Pico and uh, uh, San Vicente that takes off of there. And ironically, right between these two uh, fires, and I'll kind of drift 
over to the right there is the Wilshire Police Station. You can see that with her. Well, Michael, as you can see, they're getting ready for the curfew also. They have now arranged their cars, doors open, lights on, so that th that will be their night protection. There are still, by my count, 28 m men here, all of them armed. Um, walking back and forth. They just had a very short meeting and are now going back to assume their positions. Uh, Laurel, you might want to just pan down. As you can see here, I am on uh, Olympic Boulevard in, in Koreatown. There aren't very many people on the sidewalks. Uh, maybe that's a good sign for the curfew. Mike, Bree. All right. It's got to be a very frightening thing for uh, local law enforcement to see that people, regular citizens, are out there arming themselves, protecting their businesses, uh, it certainly it can exacerbate the situation and, and make another flashpoint for frustrations to uh, take off and become violent. Let's just hope that they can keep calm heads out there with their guns, their Bruce, Uzis. And it everything. is uh, sunset, officially. Okay. This is, this is the appointed hour. Uh, if you're out now, uh, you're breaking the law, unless you have a very good reason to do it. Uh, where are we going now? Stay home. Uh, Harvey Levin at Police Command uh, uh, in South Central. Harvey, what's the latest there? Mike, we're with Battalion Chief Bob Aaron, who has just returned from one of the many blazes today. Why don't you tell us, sir, uh, what you did? We were over on uh, Broadway, and we just coincidentally we had a, uh, a restaurant on one side of the corner and a gas station on the other side of the corner. Fortunately, our strike team had four companies. We were able to take care of both those occupancies in about oh, 45 minutes. Generally, they're down the road, so in this case, they just happen to be close enough together where the uh, strike team was able to handle both at once. I uh, just spoke to somebody a little bit earlier who said that all of the firefighters are now wearing bulletproof vests. Is that correct? The answer is no. That's right, but uh, certainly we're all going to be issued and we're all going to be wearing them. That's correct. Uh, what is the, uh, the difficulty right now? Is it that everything is being spread out to a wider area? Is that the chief problem? Well, it's a wide area, but also there's just one run after another. Uh, we've been out there about uh, this trip about seven hours, and there's been about 19 runs. But it's also uh, opening the field for anyone but everybody to go and take their part and take the stuff from the stores and everything else. Word now from the governor that he's talking about inviting Arizona National Guard to, to come in here, too. Are they needed, and how would they be used? I don't know anything about that. We haven't been told anything about that specifically yet. Got your hands full right now trying to oh. find the use for the California guys and everything else going on. Definitely. We're still deploying. We'll probably deploy up until midnight tonight. Officer Covell, we thank you very much because I know you've been quite busy in there. We appreciate Ed? you coming out. Thank Ed, you. before so, you let him uh, go. Just a second, officer. We've got one little question. Yes. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the fact that um, in 65 during the Watts riots, even though the area was more confined, uh, LAPD did go around the neighborhoods, did go around the streets, announcing that the curfew was in effect on bullhorns and that sort of thing. Okay. Is there anything like that going on? Because we don't see, uh, we do still see uh, quite a few people on the streets at this hour. Okay. There's, they say they see a, a number of people on the streets this hour from helicopters and from our reporters in the, during the 65 riots and even the uh, East LA riots. Uh, the units went around with the bullhorns and all announcing people to get off the streets. Uh, because of curfew, is there plans to do that? Um, there's been plans talked about. I don't know throughout South Central LA if that's been conducted yet. I'm sure um, that that will be taking place shortly. Okay, thank you very much. He's got to get over to another spot right now. Thank you very much, Officer Capel. We appreciate it very much. So that's the way it is here from right now. At least that gives us some insight as to what's going on with the National Guard. And again, uh, you heard what he, what he said. They're going to try to use them in the different areas, the, the major department stores, some of the areas, even though they're already burned, because he said that, that in, in the surrounding areas, there's still other... They don't want people to come in and get the other stores that have survived the initial onslaught, so to speak. So, again, this is a very, very busy place, and these guys are coming in. Uh, they're tired. They get replacements, and, and some of them are coming in, resting, getting some coffee, getting a, a little pizza, a little, a little bite to eat, and then they turn around and go out again. So, uh, from at 54th and, and Van Ness and 54th Arlington, we're right at that, that same area there. Turn it back to you. Okay, uh, Ron, why don't you get... Uh little coffee and a bite to eat, and we'll get back to you in, uh, in a few minutes. We want to uh, return, as we promised just a moment ago, to Ron Olson here in Hollywood. Ron? Hell, Hollywood Boulevard, I've got an answer for you. Hollywood Boulevard is closed from Coenga to Highland. Sergeant Steve Richards is one of the people in charge with the LAPD here. Uh, Sergeant, uh, we, we noticed there are groups of people out here in spite of the curfew. What have your instructions been? What, what have they told you in regard to the curfew, sir? Well, there is a curfew which starts at dusk, but until we have the manpower to enforce it, right now we're just trying to hold people back until the uh, fire department can get the fires out that are on the boulevard. We have several buildings burning, have been burning for about an hour and a half, two hours now. 
Uh, you appear to be protecting the fire units. Is, is that is that the procedure for the LAPD to go out and provide cover for the fire units? Yes, they have a uh, they have a squad of personnel that follow the units from wherever the calls are. They came out of a different division tonight. Uh, we're basically trying to control the boulevard right now between Cahuenga and Highland, keep the looters out, and allow the fire department to get the fires out. Have, have you heard anything about how these fires got started? One guy told me that somebody rode by on a bike and, and uh, lobbed Molotov cocktails into this, this shop here. No, I didn't. Uh, we were all uh, just coming on to watch at uh, 6 tonight, and uh, we got the call that there were several fires on the boulevard, and several squads were sent up here to try to get control. Have you and your career ever been this busy before? No, I haven't. This is definitely uh, something I'll remember. Okay, hang in there. Thank you very much, sir. Sergeant Steve Richards with the LAPD and uh, Hal uh, I reiterate that uh, Hollywood Boulevard shut mm. down from Cahuenga to Highland. At okay, this point. Uh, Ron, uh, we'll be getting back to you in a few moments, so do stand by. But a very important uh, call I would like to make now uh, to Major Pat Antosh of the uh, California National Guard. Major, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you uh, tell me exactly what? is happening with the California National Guard. I can't be more blunt than that, Major. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, where is the Guard? Okay, the Guard is out there. We, uh, as you all know, the governor called up 2,000 guardsmen and women earlier, and uh, we've been activating and pulling people in from all over the state and sta to the staging areas. The reason, it, one of the reasons that it's taking so long for us to become visible on the streets is that we are, we are coordinating with the local law enforcement, and this is a major operation. You just don't take people and just put them places. You have to do a lot of coordination and make sure that all the bases are touched and everybody's communicating with each other. There are National Guard troops on the street now. Uh, we have uh, several units that are assigned to the local law enforcement, and they are utilizing them to the best uh, of, to get the best possible utilization. How uh, many uh, troops are we talking about, Major? Pardon me? How many uh, troops are we talking about? Uh, there's approximately 1,000 troops on the streets right now. And uh, as I understand, the original uh, deployment was 2,000. The original Is that correct? deployment was 2,000. And um, there are another thousand en route to different areas here in the Los Angeles area. We, uh, one of the problems that we were running into in just getting the troops to the staging areas, a lot of us came from various parts of the state. And I myself came from uh, San Luis Obispo, and it took me over 12 hours to get here because I was flying, and I couldn't fly into L.A. Where, where did, excuse me, let me just ask mm -hmm. one question. Where, where did you fly into? ended up flying to Sacramento and then flying directly to San Diego where I um, picked up a car and drove up. Well, why, you know, that, that, that is amazing to me, Major. Why, for example, were you not flown from, let's say, one staging area near San Luis because Obispo? Because I was to not uh, on orders. And that's uh, when you get people off their regular job, they have to get, you know, get your equipment and get home and uh, pick up whatever it is that you need, then you check into your unit, and it's it's just like everything else that, that you do. You can't just stop and run to the street. Now, may I ask you what kind of orders uh, you are under uh, to do what specifically, and to whom do you report? We report to the field command, and I specifically reported to Los Alamitos here, where the field commander is, and uh, we're on state active duty orders. And uh, under whose command are you? The uh, the state or LAPD or? We originally come under the state. Uh, the governor has activated us, so he's he's our boss. That's our state mission. That's the the unique thing about the National Guard that differs from the the other military components is that we have a state mission and the governor becomes our boss when we're under state active duty and then we have a military field commander that is here and uh, we work for him and he's the one that that uh, you know is leading the military aspect of it and coordinates with the local law enforcement and they're the ones that decide what troops are needed where okay jan carl uh, has a question uh for you major okay. yes uh you mentioned that there were one thousand of the guards uh, men and women right now deployed on the street another one thousand awaiting deployment is there any talk there uh that you know of of bringing in the other two thousand that were referred to earlier in the day by mayor bradley uh yes they they have already been told to uh, 
to uh, report to their units. So it's, it's just a matter of, uh, again, getting them in from various parts of the state. So we are looking at 4,000 total. Uh, there were these shootings. Uh, gunfire was exchanged. Uh, uh, no deputies were injured uh, in either of those incidents, although one uh, was injured last night while uh, uh, providing security for a uh, fire company down in the Carson area. Uh, and one of our radio cars in, in Firestone took some fire last night, uh, returned the fire, and we learned this morning that the individual was in fact hit by the deputy's return fire when he showed up for treatment uh, at MLK uh, Hospital. Uh, Sheriff, we're Sheriff. looking at live pictures. Just excuse us for interrupting you, but these look like they're homes that are involved or dwellings of some sort, and we're watching people with yeah. uh, dish pans and small buckets trying to uh, put them out. How tragic. What are your thoughts, Sheriff? Uh, you've lived in this uh, city and county for many decades now. Your thoughts about what you're seeing, not as a cop, but uh, just as a human being. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I am angered, uh, I am saddened, frustrated that uh, we have been unable to, to stop what's going on uh, and these people who are setting these fires and causing people to uh, lose their homes, to lose their businesses, uh, causing the community to suffer the consequences of not having these uh, community businesses available to them, uh, have to be pure sociopaths who have absolutely no sense of feeling, no concern, no awareness, really, of, uh, of what the impact of their actions might be. We're looking at, uh, at live pictures. Uh, Larry, do we know where these pictures are? Okay. It, it is past the curfew, but uh, these people are obviously out with garden hoses and buckets trying to say they're not, these are not uh, rioters or... Been on scene. We saw a ground report. Now you're seeing a live television picture from up above. There is nothing that could stop this fire. These are completely lost, and they are spreading deadly, burning embers all through the neighborhood. And there's an, oh, it looks like the whole block's gonna go. There are now spot fires starting to the area south of these main uh, fires. <coughs> so I think it's, uh, I think we're gonna lose the entire block here. We're gonna lose the entire block here, no doubt about it. We're seeing the fire progression spread to the south at least three structures four structures five six six structures now engulfed in flames and now someone has set fire to a portion of uh, a commercial structure across the street as well this is hellish it's like devil's night in detroit except these are not abandoned buildings these are places where people live that are now burning out of control but however this is just too late for most of the homes over here on Manhattan Place uh, near Venice. I think that's the best location that I can get to right now. Very, it's hellish. That's the way to describe it. Bob Tur, uh, here's a question I asked you yesterday, and I'm, I just want to ask it to you again, put it to you again, because some people may be wondering as they're watching all this aerial coverage, Explain to us why it is uh, not advisable to do aerial drops to put this kind of fire out. A lot of uh, that you're looking at, I don't know if you can see it. Three minutes ago, it was speeding through the intersection and flipped over. We're trying to determine if there's anybody inside. A couple of people crawled out and they were covered with blood. I don't think I see anybody else. I'm checking over here. Let me see. Let me see. 